God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. And truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the pastor of the church. And we have a great message for you today. A message that will touch your thinking. The title of our message today is, Who Am I to You? I'll be coming from Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13, which reads as follows. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And this is where I got the title for my message. Who do you say that Jesus is? Who is Jesus in your life? Now here we see that Jesus was walking the coast of Caesarea Philippi. And of course, all of us that have been to Israel have walked on the, on the coast of Caesarea Philippi. And we see that he asked his group, about who people say that he is. And, of course, it was answered. And this acknowledgement of who the Son of Man is has been said to be one of the most profoundly made statements in the New Testament. The thing is, is that when you come to Christ, when you say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, He is the Savior of mankind, you, you have eternal life. But you must confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart when you do so, that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the Anointed One, sent by God to redeem mankind back to him. Let me make mention of this. There are many who attend a church but yet have no relationship with Jesus Christ. And why? Because their only relationship is with the building, the physical building, or a body, which means it's like a social club. It's an organization. They don't go to worship and praise God to acknowledge Christ. They go to gather, to spend time with their friends, to talk about the latest events, to have potluck dinners, to have pizza night, to see their, their boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever. They don't go for the reason that the church was set up that is to have fellowship with one another in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the body of believers, who is the head of the church, who is the rock, the pillar, the, the chief cornerstone of Christianity. So, think about this while we go through the message. How would you answer Jesus' question? Just think about that. Let that go around in your head, in your brain for a while, while we preach a message. So let me read our scripture again. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13. When Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who is everybody recognizing me as being? Am I the son of Joseph the carpenter? Am I the son of Mary? Am I the brother of my brothers and sisters? Who am I? Am I a prophet? Am I a healer? Am I a teacher? Am I a preacher? Who am I? So, 
when I present this question, a lot of people are saying, well, he's the one that was born on Christmas Day. Or he's the one that they crucified at Easter time. But he's the one that we pray to when we have a need. But truly, who is he in your life? Who is he to you? That's the question today. And Jesus is asking, who am I to you? Where am I in your life? Where am I, am I your every breath? Do you yearn for me? Do you desire me? Do you thirst for me? That's what he is asking today. And it was also fitting our praise today because it all dealt with that. So, who is Jesus to you? Is he that little baby in a manger that you're going to see all during this Christmas season? If that's all he is, then he's not your Savior and Lord. If you look at him as the baby in a manger, he's not the baby in a manger. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He died on Calvary that you may have life. That's who he is. He's got that baby in a manger. He's got a nativity scene. He is the Son of God. That's who Jesus is. Let's go to verse 14. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 14. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. You see, they were judging Jesus by the miracles that he performed or the things that he said but not for who he really was. Oh, yes, he was a prophet, yes. But they were trying to equate him with other people. They're trying to equate him with human beings. John the Baptist, who was beheaded. Now, we know that that's not John the Baptist coming back from the dead. And Elijah the prophet, and they said Elijah the prophet because Elijah was to come back. That's what the Jews believed. He would return. Why? Because Elijah didn't die. But as we've seen in the book of Revelation, we believe that Enoch and Elijah, they shall return. They shall return at the end time. But guess what? The church won't be here to see it. Because we'll be gone. Because we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Amen? Jeremiah died. All the other prophets died. Elijah died. They all died. So he can't be one of them. Now, they couldn't mean that in the spirit of Elijah or Jeremiah or Enoch, in the spirit of. But here, we're not talking about a spirit, we're talking about the Son of Man. The Son of God. The Anointed One. <clears throat> so, who are people saying Jesus is? In Jesus' time, they said that he was a wine bibber. He, he hung around prostitutes. He hung around tax collectors. And when they questioned Jesus about it, he said, it's not the health that they need a doctor, it's the sick. Sick what? Sick spiritually. Lost. Are you lost today? Then you need Jesus in your life. He's the great physician. He's the only one that can heal your soul. He's calling you today. Let's move right along to Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. <clears throat> And this is, I mean, never forget this verse. This, this here. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? See, <laughs> so they've been following Jesus now for a while. And he's asking them, 
his disciples. Who do you say that I am? He's asking the whole group that was with him. Who do you say that I am? He's asking every single one of them. Now you might think in a whole group and those that have been following him and heard his teachings and ate with him, slept with him, listened to him every day, you think that all of them would automatically jump up and say who he is. Ask the church. Go into a church con congregation and ask them, who is Jesus? See what they say. He's the one we celebrate was born on Christmas. We celebrate him at Easter. That's who he is. He's a little baby in a manger. No. <laughs> he is the great king, the great judge that's going to come back at the second coming. But yet he's going to come at the rapture. And those that he takes, they're judged as innocent. Those that are behind are judged as guilty. Will you go in the rapture? Or will you wait for the second coming when he comes back to the earth? Will you, will you or will you not go through the tribulation? You pre-trip, mid-trip, or post-trip? I'm ready to go whenever he comes. Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord. And the Savior and Lord of everyone here today. Who is he to you today? Think about that. You still have time to answer that. So he asked a whole group. I don't know how many. His disciples. I don't know how many. He had a lot of disciples. He had apostles, disciples. A disciple is, is a, a student. He had a lot of people following him. Because you have to read the whole thing. And a lot of people listening, following him. Who is Jesus in your life? Who is he? I hope by the end of this message, you'll be able to answer that. So the question should not only be answered by individuals, but also by clergy. Not just people that go to church, but the clergy. Those that are ministers of God. Those that claim to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. They need to ask the question of who am I in Christ? Ask themselves. And I want to ask you today, if you're a minister, who is Christ in your life? Is he just somebody that you preach about? Is he just somebody you preach about because the the congregation pays you to preach a message? Do you preach about Jesus or a health and wealth gospel? Do you preach the truth according to the Word of God or what you think is the truth? Are you preaching from the Bible or some commentary? Who are you in Christ? If you're not preaching Jesus Christ, born, crucified, died, and rose again from the dead and sent into heaven, you're not preaching the gospel that I preach. You're not preaching the gospel according to the word of God. So who are you preaching today? Some get rich quick scheme? Something to, to pull money in your congregation? Or are you preaching eternal life through Jesus Christ? Who are you preaching today? See, the, cur the clergy are especially accountable for every word that comes out of their mouth. And you will stand before God by giving account for every word that comes out of your mouth. True and untrue. To those that get saved and those that God get away because you don't preach the truth. The words that you preach about getting rich in this world and those you preach about riches from heaven. What are you preaching today? What are you witnessing to others? Are you letting your light shine before men that they would glorify God? Or are you glorifying yourself? 
God says, I will share my glory with no man. Who are you today? Let's move right along to Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. It reads, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You got this whole group of people. And here this burly guy, this fisherman, this ruffian, gets the revelation from God. He gets the revelation through the Holy Spirit. His, his outer view, his outer look, did not affect the Holy Spirit speaking to him. So people think you can't preach unless you have a suit on. I have no suit on. Or if you're on the corner with a Bible, you're, you're not a preacher because you're not in a fancy church and a fancy pulpit. Wrong. The Spirit spoke through Peter. This is what he said. Thou art the Christ, the anointed one of God, the Son of the living God, the God that is alive today and lives forevermore. He always was, always will be. He never changes. Try to absorb that for a moment. Tell me if that's what you hear from the pulpits today. Or do you hear things that are politically correct? Oh, it's not right. It's, it, it's old. It's, it's old preaching to preach about hell. Instead, you preach about everybody going to heaven and they're not going to heaven. When they die, they wake up, they're in torment. Because of your preaching, your testimony, your witnessing, you will answer before Almighty God for it. Think about that today. What's coming out of your mouth today? What are you telling others about Jesus Christ? Or just tell them, come to our church. We have all these programs for you. We have a food pantry. We have fellowship meals. What's that got to do with eternal life? Think about that for a moment, too. What are you feeding people? Are truth in the Word of God? Or food for the bodies? Feeding a body that's going to perish? Or are you feeding their soul that lives forever? What are you feeding them? What is the makeup of your food? Are you feeding them junk food? Or are you feeding them healthy food? Are you feeding them the pure milk of the Word? Or the milk or the formula that you give babies. What are you giving them today? You want to come here? You want to hear the meat of the Word of God. And you want to live. Because we preach the truth. What are you preaching today? What's being heard? When you go out and witness, what do you tell them? What, you, what, what they want to hear? Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't have to go to church and be saved. Don't worry about church. Just believe you get to be in church, to be fed. You want a, a life of confusion in Christ? Watch the TV. Watch the Christian channels. You want to hear differences in doctrine? You want to hear, you want to be confused? Watch it. You need to be where God has put you. Not with a glass of iced tea, a cup of coffee, your feet propped up, watching TV. You need to go out and be in the house of the Lord. Go down the altar for prayer. Repent of your sins. That's what you need to do. Nobody said Christianity was a belief of comfort. Look at Paul walking the Asian way, carrying the gospel. Sailing the seas, carrying the gospel. Look at Jesus walking the dusty roads of Galilee. Calling his disciples, fishermen, and teaching them. Look how the, the word of God, because it was truth, spread throughout the world, throughout the Roman Empire, into the new world, which we call here, North America, the United States of America. We have churches on every other corner. 
Some churches shutting down, not enough people. Because we're buying video games, we're buying everything else. We're not giving to God's kingdom. What you do comes with a price. Everybody's got money here. Black Friday this week, Christmas presents, toys out the game today by spending a hundred bucks on a toy. But don't give ten cents to the work of the kingdom. <coughs> you say you're saved, you say that you love Jesus and you go to church, there's something wrong. There's something wrong with your walk, or you're in the wrong church. Well, they push all, this, all these other things instead of pushing eternal life, instead of promoting the kingdom of God. There's a problem today in the church. And if the church has problems, it's because the people aren't speaking up. They're not reading the Word of God. They depend on somebody to feed them what they need. To make them feel good when they leave. Oh, I feel so good. I went to church today. They're not even saved. They did their duty. They came in lost and they left lost. I want to back up just one second to the same chapter. But verse 6, it says, Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the spiritual leaders at that time. Beware of the sin that they promote. Beware. Beware of what your ears hear, what your eyes see. Beware. If it doesn't line up with the written word of God, get away from it. Run as fast as you can. Like Jonah. When he ran to Nineveh as fast as he could. Get away from it. Because it's got the truth. It's a lie. Let's move right along to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 17. It says, Jesus said, or oh, well, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Do you want to be blessed? Pay attention to the word of God. Open your spirit to the Word of God. Hunger for the Word of God. Thirst for the Word of God if you want to be blessed. You go into this store, you say something, oh, how are you today? Oh, I'm blessed. They might be on their fifth husband or wife. They may be hungry, starving. Oh, I'm blessed. It's a front. If you're not in the Word of God, you're not seeking God, you're not eating from his table of grace, drinking from his living waters. You're not blessed. Blessed is just a word that people use. And they've been using it in Christianity for several years. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. They're not blessed at all. If you're stealing from God, Malachi says, you're cursed with a curse. Blessing? You're robbing God? You're not blessed. Get that straight right now. You're giving to God. You're seeking God. You're attending church faithfully. You're having fellowship. You have love in your heart. You don't have hate or animosity. You're blessed. You got food and raiment? Enough to, enough to suffice you? I didn't say 50 pairs of shoes, 25 suits, a BMW. Those things perish. God says he will meet your need. Not your greed. The greedy desires. Don't covet your neighbor's goods. 
We forget about that one. We always think of National Network covered that neighbor's wife. Uh, how about his goods? Everything he has? Well, I've got to keep up with them. So I'm going to go get one, whether I can afford it or not. Hey, credit cards galore. I get things for credit cards every week, four or five different ones every week, over and over and over again. This is your day. You're pre-approved. Just sign here. Forget it. Forget it. No Christian should be in debt. If you're living right, you're doing right, you're serving God, God's going to bless you. So as we see here, man cannot tell you anything. It's by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals truth. When somebody tells me something, over the years told me something by God, a lot of times the Holy Spirit said, uh-uh. It's not right. And as I grew and grew and grew, I saw that what they were saying was not right. I almost fell into that wealth and health gospel and all that stuff. But there was something that blocked it, something that kept me from following that teaching. I continued to follow the truth of the Word of God, studying hour after hour after hour and praying hour after hour after hour. To find out the truth. And when God gave me peace, I knew it was His peace. Because peace comes through Jesus Christ. And the Spirit will give you the peace. The Spirit will speak all truth to things of Christ and make things real. <coughs> but truth only comes through God through the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. In closing, I want to go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, which says, And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Now, Jesus said, and I say, thou art Peter, which means the stone. And on your testimony that I am the Christ, I'm going to build my church. The church is built upon me and who I am, Jesus said, not Peter. Remember, would Christ build his church on Peter, who the first thing he did was deny him three times before the cock crowed? It's the truth of who Jesus is, the Christ, the anointed one of God, the Redeemer, the Messiah. And that's the foundation of the church, the church of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's the church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Satan will never overtake the church. Government officials will never overtake the church. Liars, deceivers in the church will never overtake the church. Period. It won't happen. False religions will never overtake the church. The world, the evil, or any other adversity can never stop the church from moving on can never stop the gospel of truth from moving ahead. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a socialist, a communist. I don't care who you are. You can never stop the word of God from going forward. You have no power over the word of God. You have no power over God. You are nothing in the eyes of God. You're like a cockroach. You are nothing, nothing. You have no power over God. You are not more popular than God. You will never be more powerful than God. Satan is not more powerful than God. That's why God cast him out of heaven. 
And Jesus Christ died to set the captives free. And those that accept them have eternal life. And Satan has no power over God's people. I don't care what your role is in the church. If you're not preaching what is right, got to do what is right, you will answer to God. In our country, from our president down, if you're coming against the church, coming against God's people, you will pay a heavy price for it. If you're saying, I'm a Christian, and lying to see with people, and you're not, you will answer for every lie, every idle word. The law of sowing and reaping continues. What you sow to, that's what you reap to. And liars will be lied to. Deceivers will be deceived in themselves. Period. I hope you got that. Period. That's the way it is. There is no other way to heaven except through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father except by me. Some translations say, through me. Jesus is the door. You can join a church and go to hell. You can pray and go to hell. But when you believe in Jesus Christ, you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Where do you stand in Christ today? Is he the anointed one of God? Is he, his, if, is he the Christ, the son of the living God? Have you built your life on that truth? If you have it, I just want to tell you that truthfully. You're not going to heaven. You're not saved. You'll end up in hell. You might say, oh, all well, my friends will be there. Well, that's great. But if you die before them, you don't know if they're going to get saved or not later on. Through the preacher that preaches your funeral while you're agonizing and torment, they're getting saved. Think about that one for a moment. Who is Jesus Christ in your life today? If you want to know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want to pray with you today. That concludes our message. I want to pray with you today. But I want to ask you again. If Jesus was asking you this question, how would you answer? Who am I to you? If you can't say he is your Savior and Lord, you're going down the wrong path. But you don't have to continue on that path. You can accept him today and be born again and go to heaven should you die today or whenever or at it at a long age, a great age. No one knows the day, the hour when we're going to leave here. The thing is just to be ready. Because you never know when the Son of God, the Son of Man, is coming for his believers. So if you have never accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord, today I want to pray with you. You must believe in your heart, you must confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you want to do that today, I want to meet you in a prayer. I can't pray to get you saved. I can pray for your soul that you be convicted to, to get saved, but I can't save you. If you want to be saved today, saved means from the judgment and wrath of God. You must believe the gospel. That Jesus was born. He walked the earth for 33 and a half years. He was crucified died, was buried, rose again from the dead, and ascended into heaven. He got to at the right hand of God the Father. <clears throat> if you have never accepted Christ, won't you say this prayer with me? God, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today. Who am I to you? And I thought that I was a Christian. But come to find out today, I am not a Christian. That I am a sinner. I attend a church, but I, 
I never accepted Christ as my Savior and Lord. I was baptized, but I never accepted Christ as my Savior and Lord. But today, I'm going to change my life around. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. I believe that He was born, that He walked the earth for 33 and a half years. I believe that He was crucified, died, was buried, rose again from the dead, and ascended into heaven. God sitting at your right hand in place of power and majesty. I believe that he is the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I ask you to forgive me of my confession of faith in Jesus Christ. I don't understand everything, but I ask you to teach me, lead me, and guide me. Help me to turn from my sinful and to tell others about Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. I want to serve Him for the rest of my life. I want my family to be saved. I pray for their salvation and my friends. And open the door for me to talk to others about my newfound faith in Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. And I thank you today. Amen. If you said that prayer and meant it, let me welcome you into the kingdom of God. What I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church. Don't just watch TV. Go to a Bible preaching, teaching church. Speak to the pastor. Ask him to anoint with oil to pray with you. He may ask you to recite the sinner's prayer again. That's okay. Then ask him to baptize you by full immersion in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then what I'd like you to do is contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. That's abundant.grace at att.net. Or through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net. You can even contact us through our other website, which is Abundant Grace of Midlothian. That's M-I-D-L-O-T-H-I-A-N dot com. That's www.abundant.grace. Grace of Midlothian.com. Please, let me hear from you. To all you that receive Jesus Christ, say welcome to the kingdom of God. Please let me know so I can keep you up in prayer. I don't care where you are in, in the world. There's no distance in prayer. Thank you for being with us today. Our message has been, Who am I to you? From Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13. We are Bundy Grace Church, and I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the pastor of Bundy Grace Church. And please continue to watch us on YouTube, listen to us on Ustream, and listen to our radio broadcast on PirateRadio.com under Bundy Grace Church, on uh, uh, Victory in Christ, on Ustream.tv. Please follow us. We praise God for you today, and thank you for being with us. God bless you, and go with God.